He is a forensic search and rescue expert. He's the man leading that uh, private uh, search for the family. And he's also author of What Lies Beneath. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Julie. Thank you so much indeed for joining us, Peter. Um, you have uh, been speaking out uh, to the media in recent days about your concerns that the police are sort of fixated on this idea. They, they, they've said repeatedly in press conferences, including yesterday, they believe that the most likely thing to have happened is that Nicola Bully has fallen, slipped into the river, um, and they are searching for her body, and that they, no foul play has taken place. You believe that may not be the case? Look, what, what I deal with so many drownings every year. We average about 10 drownings and number of suicides, Julia. And the thing is, here, we've got Nicola, if she went in where that mobile phone was found that day, the police divers searched it that afternoon. I'm standing at the river now. It's very benign. This part of the river, to get across, is not a tidal river here. There's no hardly any current here. And the police divers went in. Now, normally, when a body... When someone drowns, they go straight to the bottom, to, to the river, and they stay there. They hardly move. Within our experience, you know, maximum three or four metres, that has to be a really strong current because the body will just sit on the bottom. And the police divers are very professional. They've done a thorough search that day, and Nicola was not there. And since then, it's been searched and searched, and there's this stuff, all bit she's gone down to the sea. Um, I don't believe that because that's a t that's tidal over the top of the weir and then you've got to get over the weir and then it's very shallow the other side of the weir. And you, yes, her body would have turned up. Now you said when you started this search, called in by the family uh, and helping them, that, that, that you said, you know, look, if her body is there, we will find it within hours. You're now on your third day of searching? We're on a third day, Julie, and, you know, we, we got a high hit rate for finding people very, very quickly. You know, 20 odd years of experience of dealing with this. And I would like to say we are the official police dive team for the whole of the south of England. We work for the police every day, uh, getting called in from all the forces across the southeast. So we're not amateurs. This is why we're used by the emergency services. Um, and this just baffles me. This case, I mean, the police can have their own opinion. That's that's fine. That's that. that but this is my personal view and i'm not trying to speculate but I, i'm allowed to do that and that's just my professional opinion in dealing with these for many many years yeah it's just so odd this one well indeed and, and you, you've said you know you think that a third party could be involved on whether or not this the mobile phone the, the crucial things we've got 10 minutes where we're not accounted for there's no cctv uh, witnesses who've been uh, located in the area have said yes they saw her here they saw her there at this time or that time um she was yeah. on a business conference call um but we've got 10 minutes which are not accounted for and the belief is that in that time she must have fallen into the river the, the police seem to think no evidence that of, of, of any damage to that side of the river that you know that the, the side whether or not she had fallen it or her dog was found dry minutes later uh, uh, and the dogs dogs I understand normally if an owner falls into a, a water they tend to bark loudly they stay near the owner yeah. her mobile phone left on that conference call on the bench um, the lots of these things you know, don't add up. Um, the family member, I remember hearing a family member, I think one of her sisters saying something like, people don't just vanish into thin air. But the concern is actually, this has happened a number of times. People do get abducted, vanish into thin air. People sometimes do go missing and um, the foul play is involved or there has been an accident. W what is your best theory then? If she didn't fall into the river, what do you Look, think I, may I, have I, happened? I've I, I worked on so many cases. A few years ago, we had a, a de... A, a, a a, a, a Laura Torn in um, Alston Ferry near Scunthorpe, we were called in to search the river for the police. And that was actually a big police operation. And there was a shoe found by the river, her stiletto shoe. She was buried miles away in a haystack. It was a pure decoy laid by the killer. And then we talk about the dogs two or three years ago in Ripley, that a man drowned. We called in by the police to recover the man's body and his dog was sitting there crying on the side of the riverbank, marking the exact spot. This is in my vast experience of working on cases. And I can tell you now, if she had gone in that river that day just down there, this is this is through my years of experience, bodies don't just drift away like that. The police divers, in my opinion, would have we would have found her, the police divers would have found her that day. It, I, I'm standing near the bench now. You know, it's a steep bank. And why why did she go near the river? She knows the area. Uh, it's 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 just so odd, and that's just my opinion.
Yeah, indeed. I do think there is a, a risk, and, and again, I think this is obviously a concern of the family, and of course she's left her partner and two very young girls as well who, who've not had their mummy home for, for 12 days. I think our hearts yep. go out to them. The, the idea that the police, sort of, and it, we, when we've seen this in, in many other investigations over the years, they can get very fixated on one idea, right? She's in the river, that's the most likely thing. We haven't got any evidence of a, a dodgy man in a car or, or you know nearby or, or sounds of anyone hearing anyone struggling. So we think that's what's happened. And then they get fixed fixated on that and although they go through the motions of doing other things like checking other CCTV and people in the area they don't put as much effort into it as they would otherwise well I think we just I think everybody just needs to keep an open mind here Julia that's what it needs to be it's not she's in the river we don't know where she is and I think that's probably the best thing to say we don't know where Nicola is and I think that's the best the best thing to say at the moment um, I mean, if a body does go in the river, yes, it can get lodged under trees. It can get lo lodged under what we call strainers. Um, we haven't got any just here. But if the body had gone over the weir and, and the water was higher that day, yes, it could get lodged in the reeds. I accept that, which the sonar won't find. And, and people f appear two or three months later. But that's highly unlikely in this case and um it, it's getting from here to the weir is that is the problem she's got to get from here to the weir can i ask you about your your contact with the the family of nicola bully um uh, paul her partner i know you've been in, in touch with him um yeah. how are they bearing up it's it, i mean they're clearly upset at the family and um you know he, he's he's he just doesn't know where Nicola is and it's the children you know I feel sorry for as well I mean it's it's such a difficult time for everybody and and nobody wants to you know it's it, we just need to find Nicola yeah. one way or the other and bring closure that's the key thing I, I mean and and also I just want to ask you uh, I mean not to go into the horrific details uh, uh, too much and people you know sitting there having breakfast with their kids perhaps this morning but we know that there are some things that we can predict about what happens to human bodies when they fall in in water in terms of the likelihood of when they begin to float more likely to be found if they have been uh, at the bottom of a, of a river or uh, is, it, is it likely that if her body is in the water that actually it would it would generally float soon? Generally, uh, Julia, and it does de it does vary with the, the body composition. So it mm. can vary. It can be five days. We've had them pop up in four days. Um, it can be, it could take two weeks. But generally, generally at this time, they'd be on the surface by now, right? As the body decomposes and on the surface. How many, so how I, many more days are you expected to carry on your search? With this, we with this will probably be our last day. But we're working long days here. We're yeah. working in. You know, in the dark. I'm on. We're on. The team we're setting up now. We've been on site quarter to eight this morning. It's freezing up here. And we're just doing a long day. We're not having any real any breaks. We're just getting on with it to try and help the police and the family, really, Julia. So yeah. we're doing the best we can, well, and we're doing this of charge, by the way. So we're not actually charging the family, as I've worked on many operations helping families trying to find loved ones in the past. Indeed, and all credit to you and your team for doing that. Look, we, we, we wish you well. Again, the awful thing is we're wishing that you don't find a body and this woman is returned to her family safe and sound. Peter Foley, so appreciate you taking the time joining us, uh, author of What Lies Beneath My Life uh, and a forensic search and rescue expert there leading that search for Nicola Bully.